good evening sir good evening so audience hope we both are audible someone if they can do the thumbs up i can hear you you can hear me yes sir i can hear you i can Pratik, hear you you can hear both of us yes sir good evening good evening good evening dr pratik it is my absolute pleasure to speak after you thank you sir thank you okay so good evening everyone on behalf of ngh i welcome you all to our 45th webinar today the topic for the session 1 is approach to fevers without localizing clinical features and today again we have the privilege of having sir dr ch s rani on the ngh platform for me it is always a humongous task to introduce our teachers of teacher who needs no introduction all of us know him and over the years especially at ngh he has played a crucial role in shaping us the next generation of homeopaths by imparting his deep clinical knowledge which is responsible for an inclusive learning environment at ngh sir is not only seasoned and experienced professional he has taken on the role of guiding and advising all of us doctors again at ngh we have always been fortunate to have him sir has played a vital role in my professional development and many aspiring doctors like me by sharing his wealth of knowledge and clinical expertise he is a very respected figure in insurance industry was associated with world health organization and has been recipient of various awards including times of india healthcare legend award in medicine over to you sir looking forward for yet another insight insightful experience thank you sushma for those wonderful words it becomes a bigger challenge to live up to them but i will try my level best so today's talk is uh, very specifically on fever with no localizing signs more so when you have a fever patient on day 1 if you are fortunate enough there's a patient says i have fever i have vomiting i have diarrhea you can focus on gi tract patient says i have fever i have cough and when i cough i have chest pain you can think of lower respiratory tract infection or pneumonia if the patient has or the child has fever and headache and parents say vomited three times you will think of meningitis what happens when you don't have any signs like that especially if the patient comes to you on day 1 or 2 of fever all of us would love to have very good results in our acute cases but what more than results i always value that no patient of mine should turn critical or maybe die due to fever so i have to from day one i have to be good at two things i have to identify any acute scenario and i have to also communicate well i have to be a master of communication patients today want to know what is a fever due to and we have to say that it's too early to give you a diagnosis because you jump on viral today three days later you say it looks like malaria then you say it looks like typhoid and turns out to be uti you lost face so we have to learn all of that fever i have a patient of fever is it truly fever i had a request from a good patient of mine about their employee in pune whose brother had fever for a month diagnosed as puo so when i told him before i talk to you on phone send me last one week chart of temperature 
they have not checked temperature even once with a thermometer. Is it just a feverish feeling? One thing I will admit, the best of doctors cannot treat a feverish feeling. You have to treat fever. Is it measured by thermometer or just by touch on forehead or cheek or the neck? If measured, how often is it measured? Has a charting been done? And my aim as a treating doctor, is it a pyrexia or is optimum pyresis? I do not want the fever to go below 98.4. I am happy with 99 because that slight fever is going to kill the pyrogens. Tell every patient to keep a chart every one and a half, two hours. Write on that what meal they have taken and what time they have given medication. In our clinic, patients who come to clinic, we give them a fever chart to maintain it and WhatsApp us every 24 hours. Fever cannot be diagnosed on day one, even with the best of clinicians. Hospitalization with one, two day fever, even with a single spike of 104, is not rational at all. Patient must keep a temperature record. Who are the high risk patients who can get complications in fever? Infants and elderly. Immunocompromised, uncontrolled diabetes mellitus, HIV positive, pregnant women, patient undergoing treatment for malignancy, and patients who have undergone organ transplantation. And bacterial and fungal infections are generally high risk. They can lead to a sinister condition and maybe mortality. Fever, whatever the cause, you will decide the remedy subsequently. Every fever, you should talk of supportive therapy from day one. Our fever chart has a listing of what all patients should consume. Whatever the cause, ensure hydration. Adult should have two liters of water when there is no fever. With fever, the intake should increase to two and a half to three liters. Soft, easily digestible, nutritious food. Fruits, salads, khichdi, soups, all that. And replenishing losses. If the patient is losing water, either vomiting or diarrhea, or profuse perspiration by excessive intake of dolo, they must consume electrolytes so that losses are repleted. You may control fever, but patient will complain of fatigue for 10 more days. Rational thinking in high fever with no localizing signs. First visit to the doctor, day one or two. Patient is acutely ill. My antenna should go up. Can I see a red light anywhere? Patient immunocompromised, my antenna should go up. Pregnant, patient on dialysis and patient with spleen removed, splenectomy done, either as a part of disease or as a part of accident. All these five categories, I have to be worried. I will do basic investigation which depending on the age, maybe just CBC, CRP, routine urine in the beginning, maybe with the severity of pain, you may do dengue on day one, whatever. But after basic investigation and clinical examination, no clue to etiology other than a fever of 101, 102. Now, if this patient with no clue to etiology, you find any of the below. Toxic appearance. Patient looks toxic. A normally happy patient is not willing to look at you and smile. Hypotension. 
we normally forget to check pulse BP of patients with fever. Check pulse manually. <coughs> Reflex tachycardia is okay. But a fever of 100.5 and a pulse rate of 130 in a patient who has no hypertension, no diabetes is something worrying. A BP 90 by 60 or below. Altered sensorium, patient drowsy, patient not understanding what you are talking. Low platelets, below 1 lakh. Leukocytosis or leukopenia, high WBC or low WBC with bands. What are bands? The presence of immature neutrophils called as bands in the circulating blood is often used as a clinical indicator of sepsis. Any of this in a patient who has fever and no clue to etiology, consider the patient to be in bacterial sepsis and consider that if this patient is not treated optimally immediately, this patient may go into ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, acute renal failure, cardiovascular shock or encephalopathy. Infections that present non-focally, that means there are no localizing signs. Infectious endocarditis. Although rare, but it can occur in your patient and that is 100% there. Shortness of breath with fever. Heart rate and blood pressure deranged. Extreme tachycardia, extreme bradycardia and hypotension. Viral infections, hepatitis due to hepatitis A, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, hepatitis E, cytomegalovirus and Epstein-Barr virus. Malaria and dengue, recent travel history important if they have been to an endemic zone. Any infection in the elderly will not present focally and you may not even have an indication of high fever. Non-infectious conditions presenting with fever. There is no infection, but patient has fever. Malignancies, acute myeloid leukemia, acute lymphoid leukemia, lymphomas and renal cell carcinoma. Vasculitis, lupus. Many of you are treating patients of autoimmune disorders. So when they come with fever, consider a flare-up or exacerbation of the underlying condition rather than looking at a dengue, malaria or anything. Rheumatic fever, sarcoidosis, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. Any of these pre-existing conditions, consider them responsible for the fever rather than a, another viral condition. And today, everybody loves to use azithromycin. Azithromycin is one antibiotic that gives rise to fever if taken injudiciously. So ask your patient, then you will have no signs because there are no signs, it is a drug-induced fever. So what lab investigations in a patient with acute fever with no localizing sign? Now all of these need not be done at one go, but keep them in mind that they may be required and all of them should be done before you label a patient of pyrexia of unknown origin. Complete hemogram. Emphasis should be on hemoglobin, packed cell volume or hematocrit, WBC and platelet count. And you should see the morphology of RBC. Are there bands present? Why are we focusing more on hemoglobin and PCV? Any sign of fever and body ache showing hemo concentration, my antenna goes up, double up, two red lights. This patient could be going in shock any minute. Smear for malarial parasite, Vivex and falciparum antigen. One of the two you can do. You can do antigen in the clinic only. These are slide methods. 
डेंगू एन एस वन एंटीजन आईजीएम डेंगू आईजीजी डेंगू और पीसीआर इफ मोर देन थ्री फोर डेज एव गॉन एंड यू नॉट पिकिंग अप एनीथिंग डेंगू डन ऑन डे वन विद इन ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स इज जनरली नेगेटिव इफ योर सिम्टम्स सजेस्ट यू मे हैव टू रिपीट द टेस्ट रूटीन यूरिन एनालिसिस IgM leptospirosis query PCR if you suspect lepto but you don't get IgM positive backtech culture only if you suspect a bacterial infection not as a blind test SGPT most sensitive indicator of liver function one test no need of liver profile creatinine most sensitive indicator of kidney function one test no need of renal profile I don't want my patient to waste money. Serum electrolytes. If an elderly patient with known hypertension on antihypertensive therapy and altered sensorium, I would add serum electrolyte as the first panel of tests. Chest X-ray. If required, ultrasound abdomen. If required, HRCT. We used to do a lot of HRCT when COVID was in vogue. we will discuss few conditions that present with just high fever body ache weakness lack of appetite will not this and these are truly the conditions which have no localizing signs first of them is dengue how does dengue come abrupt onset of symptoms the patient will never say i have been feeling unwell for two days but last night i got fever no i slept normally at 9 o'clock at 1 o'clock i got fever of 120 that is dengue unless proven otherwise headache and retrobulbar pain that worsens with eye movement is very typical a rash may be present but that is about after 4 5 days not immediately which could be petechial or other hemorrhagic rash leukopenia and thrombocytopenia and dengue ns1 positive in first 5 days clinical diagnosis fever and two of the following nausea vomiting rash body ache you can imagine are you at 4 5 or are you at 7 8 he says 7 8 8 are you drinking enough water yes doctor i will do dengue and in 90% i will be right thrombocytopenia leukopenia this is of course not a clinical diagnosis positive tourniquet test you tie a tourniquet on the arm increase it above the systolic pressure leave it for 10 seconds and open the cuff you will see petechial hemorrhages which patients are at risk patients with thrombocytopenia platelets going below 50 patients developing sepsis ARDS or acute renal failure patient getting bleeding because of thrombocytopenia getting bleeding episodes either from nose or from gi tract or an excessive menstrual period then dengue affects the patient this patient will be vomiting uncontrollably immunoglobulins igg igm usually both of them are to be done in a case of dengue don't think why am i concerned with old infection let me do igm only no both have to be done if igm is positive or negative igg is negative this is primary infection you may do ns1 is positive primary infection of dengue if both igm igg are positive this is secondary infection and secondary infection of dengue is more at risk to get into dengue hemorrhagic fever 
और डेंगू शॉक सिंड्रोम गेटिंग आईजीजी पॉजिटिव इन आईजीएम पॉजिटिव इन सपोजिटली फर्स्ट एपिसोड विल इंडिकेट दैट इट इज इन इफेक्ट सेकेंडरी इन्फेक्शन एंड दस देर इज अर चांस ऑफ डेंगू शॉक सिंड्रोम और डेंगू हेमरेजिक फीवर When do you consider hospitalizing a dengue patient? Platelet count not below one lakh but below fifty thousand. Hematocrit more than twenty percent of highest value. So if a range of PCB or hematocrit is fifty, then hematocrit above sixty patient needs to be in hospital for IV fluids. Dengue with dehydration, worst condition, severe abdominal pain, malina showing there is bleeding happening, epistaxis bleeding from gums and any infection, patient must be in the hospital, maybe in ICU. Platelet transfusion should only be given if the patient active bleeding. And or a platelet count less than ten thousand per cubic millimeter. Severity of dengue infection, dengue fever, fever with headache, arthralgia, myalgia, retroorbital pain, leukopenia, occasional thrombocytopenia, NS one positive, no plasma leak, no hemo concentration. Dengue hemorrhagic fever one, above signs with positive to urinary tract test means petechial hemorrhages. Platelet count below one lakh, more than twenty percent hematocrit rise. Dengue hemorrhagic fever two above signs with spontaneous bleeding, gums, nose, skin, or GI tract. <coughs> dengue hemorrhagic fever three is also dengue shock syndrome, above signs plus here, cold and clammy skin. Rapid three D pulse, subnormal temperature, one second. I think my internet connection is weak. And profound shock with undetectable pulse and blood pressure, almost a dying patient. Dengue hemorrhagic fever grade four or dengue shock syndrome. So just see counting of pulse and BP is very important. Take home message: Most dengue patients can be managed on OPD basis. Reliable marker for follow up of the disease is hematocrit, as opposed to platelet count. Platelet counts on manual or cell counter machines are not reliable. And can have an error of up to forty thousand due to pseudo thrombocytopenia, platelet clumping. So pay more attention to PCV or hematocrit. And if you have a doubt that patient is clinically better, platelets are low, request the lab to do a manual platelet count. The mortality rate for severe dengue is point eight to two point five percent. Children are in peak risk of severe infection and death compared to adults because their body reserve is low. However, severe infection in adult is increasingly being reported because people delay treatment. Even though hemorrhagic fever and shock syndrome are uncommon in adults, a higher morbidity and mortality rate has been reported, especially in older people. Is related to increased risk of organ impairment. That means ARDS, ARF, or shock syndrome. Coming to malaria, the second infection. All that things of fever with chills is gone. Last one month, I had three dengue patients who had no fever, just because of body ache and fatigue. We confirmed IgM positive. You had. Patients of malaria with no fever, no chills. The incidence of malaria is now on the decline across India. You all will agree that during COVID we never saw any malaria or dengue. Last two years saw less numbers, and prior to that, dengue was more than malaria. Easily curable, small percentage going to severe morbidity and death. 
clinical diagnosis again from fever, body ache, and all you have to differentiate. Moderate to severe shaking chills if they have fever every twenty four to forty eight hours. Patient almost normal in between. The patient gets a spike at ten p.m. and they come to you at eleven a.m. You will wonder who's the patient and who's the relative. High fever, extreme fatigue when the fever comes, profuse sweating when the fever goes down, headache, muscle pain. Malaria pain is typically muscle pain. Dengue pain is full body ache, nausea, vomiting, and splenomegaly. You will see a spleen enlarged. A typhoid will show spleen and liver both enlarged. Morbidity, extreme malaise and fatigue. Patient not able to talk also. Low platelets, ARF, acute renal failure, sepsis, stroke, very rare. Why stroke occurs in malaria and dengue? When the RBCs break down in malaria, they form clumps and that can cause blocks in the cerebral circulation causing stroke. In dengue, low platelets cause bleeding and they give stroke. Severe malaria, the symptoms are a history of high fever plus at least one of the following. Prostration, inability to even sit up, altered consciousness, lethargy or coma. Breathing difficulties, severe anemia, Generalized convulsion or fit, that could be cerebral malaria, inability to drink and vomit, dark urine or oliguria or anuria. Any fever with body ache, with altered sensorium, is critical, should be in a hospital. Criteria for admission poor general condition, toxic, dehydrated patient. Cerebral malaria, acute renal failure, dyspnea, SpO2 below 92, uncontrolled vomiting, and a good lab will tell you parasitemia is about 2%. That means more than 2% of RBCs are infected with malaria. Imagine we have 4.5 million RBCs per DL. Multiply by 50. So 2% of that. Imagine the number of RBCs infested. Jaundice in a confirmed case of malaria. And platelet below 50,000. Even if the condition is stable. Chikungunya. Viral disease. Transmitted to humans by Aedes aegypti. The same mosquito that transmits dengue. Fever and severe joint pain. Severe joint pain, severe backache. The name chikungunya derives from a word in Kimba Konde, African language. That means contorted or bent. And it refers to stooped appearance of victims who suffer from severe joint pain. Elderly patients who are more at risk, homeless patients who are spending time on the road and exposed to mosquito bites, travel to undeveloped country or underdeveloped country, immunocompromised status, diabetes, organ transplant, chemotherapy, HIV, AIDS. So the symptoms are fever up to 105, arthralgia, headache, backache. These are the commonest. Don't bother about rare or infrequent symptoms. These four, but fever can go as high as 105. Lab investigations, routine, a CBC will show low lymphocyte count, C-reactive protein and elevated cytokines. If you are doing IL-6, they will show with disease activity. A high IL-6, high CRP will mean a very severe chikungunya. Definitive laboratory diagnosis can be accomplished through PCR, 
which is little expensive, but you can do a IgM chicken gunia, which will be positive, appears in two weeks' time. So no point in doing earlier. Remember all these things. Chicken guni IgM will not be positive for two weeks. And if the IgG is positive, rising tighter. Leptospirosis, chick differential diagnosis, all these conditions, fever, body ache, malaise, no localizing th symptoms. Leptospirosis, meningitis, dengue malaria, and rheumatic fever. Treatment, there is no specific antiviral treatment. You have to give symptomatic treatment only. It's a self-limiting condition. You have to monitor if there are patient has low platelets, you have to monitor till the platelets rise. Entirely symptomatic. Of course, paracetamol is drug of choice for us. You can decide your own line of treatment. Although we say that there's no treatment, self-limiting, sometimes patient may have to be admitted. When do you admit? Extreme of age, people above 60 or children below one year, pregnant, fever persisting for more than five days. You have chicken gunia positive and fever is going on for five to six days, 100, 405, please admit. Incessant vomiting, uncontrolled, Intractable pain. You don't know where the pain is coming from. Patient virtually crying. Oliguria anuria, that means kidneys are involved. <coughs> Postural dizziness, cold extremities, refractory hypotension, not getting corrected even by IV fluids. Bleeding disorders, altered sensorium, meningoencephalitis. These are the complications and these patients at the first sign must be admitted. Then influenza. Nowadays, influenza means any viral fever, short incubation period, you will find cases in families or in offices or in schools. In one, two days, abrupt onset, mild URTS symptoms, non-productive cough, pharyngitis, running nose. But some influenza can become critical like H1N1 or COVID. So if you have influenza symptoms and shortness of breath and SpO2 going below 92, consider hospitalization. Usually self-limiting, but that sporadic case that becomes critical, you have to observe and manage. Leptospirosis, it's a bacterial disease that causes morbidity and mortality globally because rats are present everywhere, affecting both humans and animals. It's caused by bacteria of the genus Leptospira. Target organs in human leptospirosis are kidney and the lungs. You may have acute respiratory failure or you may have acute renal failure. Without treatment, it can lead to kidney damage, meningitis, liver failure and respiratory distress and even death. Specific history contribute to suspicion. Patient in monsoon, if there has been a flood or semi-flood, you have to ask, have you walked in collected dirty water for 5 to 10 minutes also? Yes, then you have to consider leptospirosis. Fever with conjunctival congestion and dyspnea. Never consider dyspnea as a weakness. No. Give respect to dyspnea or shortness of breath. Symptoms and signs of meningitis may be present. Headache, neck stiffness, photophobia, phonophobia. Wales disease is a syndrome of hepatosplenomegaly with jaundice, bleeding diathesis, and renal failure. Whale disease is severe leptospirosis. Detection of specific IgM response by the end of first week of the illness is leptospirosis. So 
Chikungunya, you have to wait for two weeks. Leptospirosis, by the end of one week, you can get IgM leptospirosis positive. I have explained to you how it is transmitted. All the rat holes where rats live are contaminated by rats urine. In monsoon, the water goes in and that water contaminates the rest of the collected water in which people wade. Most of us have tiny micro cuts on our feet and that is how the bacteria enter. Incubation period is 5 to 14 days. It may not occur immediately. Two distinct phases of illness are observed in mild form, septicemic or acute phase and immune or delayed phase. In ecteric leptospirosis, where patients develop jaundice, the two phases of illness are often continuous and indistinguishable. Severe leptospirosis, ARDS, that is Wales disease, thrombocytopenia, renal failure, multi-organ dysfunction syndrome, and maybe death. So when we say acute respiratory distress syndrome, this patient will either require BiPAP or a invasive ventilator therapy. Wales disease or Wales syndrome, severe form of leptospirosis, manifests as profound jaundice, deep jaundice, bilirubin may go as high as 10, renal dysfunction, high creatinine, acute renal failure, hepatic necrosis, so acute liver failure, and acute respiratory distress syndrome and bleeding from multiple sites. This is whale syndrome, almost fatal. Factors independently associated with severity of leptospirosis. Patient gets hemoptysis, yes, critical patient, because lung is the target and now the patient is bleeding. Platelet below 1 lakh, total bilirubin about 2.5, 2.5 milligram per dl, WBC about 13,000, hematocrit less than 30% of lowest value. So if you have 45, 30% of that is 12. You have a hematocrit of 33 or 30, that is critical. Severe leptospirosis, kidney, lung and severe thrombocytopenia needs admission. Wales disease needs admission. And which patients are likely to die? Respiratory failure, respiratory rate more than 24 per minute, hemoptysis, blood in sputum, oliguria, definite kidney involvement, metabolic acidosis. What is the definition of oliguria? Passing less than 500 ml of urine in 24 hours and anuria is passing less than 50 ml of urine in 24 hours. Metabolic acidosis, platelets below 1 lakh. Complication, as I have said already, acute kidney injury, acute pulmonary injury, pulmonary bleed, respiratory failure, or septic meningitis because there are these bacteria don't reach there, but they cause meningism and disseminated intravascular clotting. I would be happy to welcome any questions. Yes, Sushma. So as of now, I can't see any questions in the chat. Anyone who would want to, you know, ask sir any question can put it on the chat. I think either it was too clear or too confusing. No, sir. Definitely it was very clear. It uh, was very exhaustive and I'm sure uh, they have under... I think I can see something. Role of doxy dosage. Doxycycline as a preventive for leptospirosis, 100 milligram BD for 5 days. 
and leptospirosis understand one thing many hospitals will cheat the patient yeah. all the latest antibiotics are not required basically doxycycline and sulfa only work if you remember the big flood of bombay about 20 25 years back there was a shortage of doxycycline because lot of people were consuming it as a preventive so we can invite krutik yes sir for before that i'd like to thank you sir for the amazing amazing session and thanks for your guidance on the clinical skills in fever you always make us neg navigate you know the complexity effortlessly and i along with ngh audience would i'm really thankful for the valuable knowledge you have imparted Uh, so thank we you, can. Pushma. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much, sir. Your table. Yes, sir. So next we have with us the proud child of Dr. Samuel Hanuman, Dr. Krithik Shah. Dr. Krithik has done his MD in homeopathy. He is the chief homeopathic consultant and medical director at Gujarat State's first private, which is the latest, largest, and most modern technological development in the history of homeopathy. I'm audible, right, Doctor Krutik? Yes, very much. So he is also a very own editorial board member at NGH. He has received many awards. To name a few, Bharat Gaurav Award at British Parliament, Global Healthcare Leadership Award 2018, and International Homeopathic Healthcare Service Award 2019. His topic is an extension to the session one, that is fevers, but with the organ on twist. Dr. Pratik will throw light on how to approach fevers without localizing clinical features. Application of organon. So, Dr. Pratik, I invite you to take on the session two. As we mentioned, give us our access to assured success. Thank you very much, Dr. Sushma. Thank you very much. I must say, uh, for respected Dr. Asrani sir, is that uh, in Uh, it is a a truth of homeopathy is that homeopathy is being blessed by the uh, professions uh, from allopathy that is allopathic doctors if you consider samuel hanneman dr j t kent boni gus and harry clark nanham dajjan blacky to last to, to name the last is dr our own beloved dr fatak sir so homeopathy is blessed to have allopathic professionals uh to take it to the next level and dr asrani sir is one of them and uh, this is the journey to go further and it is to be honest i feel very bad when homeopaths criticize allopathy that is very very bad because ultimately wo galat nahi hai wo alag hai sirf the fundamentals of homeopathy are different then allopathy and we should respect both things the way dr asrani sir loves homeopathy it is a inspiration of a great magnitude for people like us to reciprocate the same so this is i share something what i felt now going to the topic just a second okay <clears throat> is the ppt uh, just a second You are able to see, right, Doctor Sushma? Uh, we can't see the PPT, Doc. I think uh, oh, we'll have to share. Just a second. Just a second. Now, now you are able yes. to see. Yes, yes. You just need to make it as a presenter. Uh... Yes, yes, yes. Okay, is it clear? Should I go? Yes, doctor. You can yeah. go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. So now, this is a kind of uh, uh, an organ on tadka to the lecture, and uh, you will be, uh, I will be taking you a very quick uh, journey of aphorisms where uh, you need to only remember this whenever you are managing an acute. 
I have a homeopathic hospital. We make almost 270 plus indoors every year. Minimum, I am saying. And we are managing patients on evidence base, uh, on the base of evidence based case studies. And that is what we usually do in our practice. So I will be very happy to share this glimpse of information. Whether it is fever, whether it is uh, any other acute, these rules from the organ on asthma are more or less the same. See, this is, I am going to, this is like 82 aphorism, which is individualization. In acute, you don't need a long consultation. Everything is fresh in the memory of the patient. Go, go straight, go hard. Many times you are, you have to ask leading and direct questions in order to differentiate because in acute, you don't have time, you don't have opportunity. So your, your uh, hit should be first and the best. Second, about observation and examination, that is aphorism 90. People don't do examination. You know, a head, head hot, body cold, balladonna, irregular distribution of the heat. No, all these things, many symptoms are visibly available. One foot hot, one foot cold of lycopodium. Many things are available if you go for observation and examination. Use 90 aphorisms for observations and examination. Prescribe on short symptoms you, you get. There is nothing like complete picture in a case. Oh, this person is not thirstless, so I can't prescribe pulsatilla. Oh, this person is not having sweet desire, so I can't, can't, can't prescribe sulfur. No, whatever you get, hit it. But the symptom, what you take into repertory, has to be real, has to be clear, has to be unshakable. If your base for prescription is perfect, your prescription will come from repertory, will be perfect. Importance of history from the relatives. Especially in children, especially, especially in comatose patients, especially in the cases of addictions where people are not open to give history. Information of the acute. I am visiting a lot of multi-speciality hospitals here also. Importance of in a patient of coma. We hear the history from the relatives of the patient is of very great importance. Right? So this was about case taking. Now going to remedy reaction. Many times we fear. I mean, I am giving a remedy. What will happen to my patient? I, I am not clear. I am, I am this, I am that. Nothing to be worried about because organ node is mathematics. It is one plus one. One plus one has to be true. Has to be two. Has to be real. Has to be absolute, transparent, evidence-based fact. So now, 149 is how to find a specific remedy. That is, Hennepin talks, talks about three-leg stool, what Alan tells Heriman tells about three symptoms, three points you need to consider at the time of doing your prescription. Number one, greatest symptom similarity. Second, pick URS and third sphere of action. That's all. You get three things in your case. You find the remedy. It will work as a magic for you. 150 in this body. People treat any small, small problems. Right now, it's the time of Navratra, suppose here in Gujarat. People have a late night, you know, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning. They enjoy Garma. Next day, they are really, you know, they have body aches and this and that. And, they, they, and people start starting duck swabbing because of the loss of sleep. Not needed. You need indisposition. You need rest. 151, serious symptom. When a patient is in ICU, the patient has severe chest pain. You can't wait. You have to treat immediate. So trivial symptoms, don't treat. Serious symptom, immediately treat. 52, treating worse acute diseases. That is, Hennepin says homeopathy in ICU. Homeopathy in life threatening emergencies. 152 aphorism. But unfortunately, we don't read. That's a problem. 154, how to prescribe and how cure will happen. One dose will clear the problem. One dose. 154 is how to prescribe. You use this, it will give you a great benefit. 167. We are we are humans. We make mistakes. There is a possibility that we make mistakes. And uh, we how to correct our mistake. We, nobody is perfect in Matre Medica. Nobody is perfect with repertory. So we make mistakes. So Hennepin has given provision how to undo the mistake. That is 167 aphorisms. Next, posology. Many people fear going high, high, high potency in acute. I mean, there is no need. Many, many people prefer to be low. There, there is called control aggression. We are here to uh, save the patient. We are here to make the cut short suffering of the patient. We, I don't fear to go even on CM. Many cases of acute, I don't go beyond 30. There is no need. So posology is this 245 aphorism clearly tells what posology should be used in acute. 247, how frequently you should repeat. You Do you need to repeat every five minutes? There are conditions. Do you need to repeat every one hour? There are conditions. Do you need to repeat every six hours? There are conditions. Do you need to repeat one dose and just 
go to the repeat to repeat the same medicine next day there is a condition 247 is all about repetition how we should repeat many people repeat on and on and on many people don't repeat many people repeat half a this is a clear mathematics given in 247 and 47 how much we should wait Hennepin says three hours, six hours, or 12 hours. After 12 hours, if there is no improvement, your medicine is wrong. I'm going to show you a case here of uh, high-grade fever, which troubled my Monday like anything last year. And uh, the case got settled eventually, but my Monday was spoiled completely. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show, show that case to you, in which it is clear how much we should weigh, right? 247, uh, sorry, 2, 253. How you can judge the initial, the most initial signs. Most initial signs. After giving remedy, what you should, what you would like to see, what you would like to hear, what you would like to feel after giving the prescription in an acute case from the patient. Right? And last but not, not the least about do's and don'ts of acute care. Many people pay, suppose a patient has tonsillitis and a child is wanting an ice cream. Should we give it or not? Many, in, a, in, a, in the case of URDI, child is, child is asking for chocolate. Should we give it or not? 262 is the answer, right? 260, the allow desires and wishes of the patient. That is the voice of the nature. Allow with conditions. Let them finish their wishes. Let them satisfy their wishes in conditions. That is all about, I can say, a very summary of a quick, quick summary of acute homeopathic care or organon and access to assured success. If these aphorisms, if you are able to follow, probably you will never miss a single case of acute in your life. Friends, can I have your feedback quickly so that we can go, go to the next uh, the evidence-based case, case study? We'll be very happy to have your feedback. Am I am I okay? Are you am I reachable to you? I'm am I not reachable to you? Are you able to understand me clearly? Not we'll be very happy to receive a feedback in the chat. So that you know, so there is a saying: if the audience is speaking, somebody needs to wake up the speaker. So I want you not to sleep. We'll be very happy to have a feedback from the people if this present if this quick journey of acute was uh, understandable to you or not anyways okay okay thank, thank you dr purva thank you dr nishika thank you dr samina thank you dr ujaswini thank you thank you thank you everyone going going quickly to the case now i have two cases to share and these two cases are really a different experience the second case what i'm going to show you has spoiled my monday last year and that has given me a big lesson of life that I will share you later on. But this case is something which is a nightmare. I took and only because of organon, I was able to get through. So the case is like this. A four and a half year old child came to me with her parents. Cough on and off. No medicines mostly given. Cough usually at the change of weather. I'm sorry, friends. My voice is little... Uh, uh, since I'm having some some, some uh, symptoms of coriza, I may I may not be able to sound so clear. So I will speak literally. Doctor, slow. are you sharing the screen because we can't yes. see? Uh, no, we I can't see. Yeah. Just a second. Now, are you able to see? Yes, yes, we are able to see. Only the presenter mode and. Yes, and yes, yes, yeah. Just a second. Okay. So now going to the case of piracy of unknown origin. Okay. Yeah. So the case was of piracy of unknown origin. The hospital with indoor facility. Fever is like a bread and butter for me. If I'm getting a fever, I'm more comfortable to, to take that case. 
I would be happy to take acute case more comfortably rather than to take chronic case because chronic case has a, is a laborious work to do two hours of consultations, having wait and watch. Acutes are like those; they are like you know, uh, one dose finish. Patient goes home, you are you are in your your home, nothing to worry. But certain cases really are nightmare. This case was actually a nightmare for me, and the case got solved with completely different. Uh, 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 situation so completely different way than what i actually do and that's what i'm sharing with you because the topic of this webinar is something unique and these two cases the first one i'm showing now and the second one which i'll be showing later has completely different ways to get uh, a proper homeopathic simulable so the child of four and a half years of age was having cough and cold on and off mostly a change of weather, she has a stammering like bum, 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 that is very okay. But the real problem of this case was this. The patient used to get fever up to 104 degree Fahrenheit at the 11th to 15th day of every month. Means you do whatever you want to do till then the patient will be normal. On 11th patient will be badly sick with fever. Till 15th, the patient is badly sick with fever. On 16th, the patient is getting recovered. This is very unusual. This is called pyrexia of unknown origin, where the child was suffering helplessly. Whether you give allopathic medicines, whether you give homeopathic medicines, whether you don't give anything, in a way, the child is going to get fever. Of what may? 10th, to 50, 11 to 15 every month was a nightmare for a family. Before 10th, the child is absolutely normal. After six, after 15th, that is on 16th, till next month, 10th day, the child used to be normal. I mean, what is this? This is really a very, very difficult situation to deal with. And the child has a fever of maximum 104 degree Fahrenheit. And the child has this let me make this annotation score. Child was normal till evening, but as soon as the night starts, the fever gets started. Usually, the fever used to hit more on the night. Whatever you do, you give double dose of paracetamol. Whatever it is, the fever does not go to normal. Fever becomes absolutely normal in the day, whether we give the medicine in the night or not. So, in a way, this is a typical case of night rise of temperature. In that too, in a very specific 10 to 15, 11 to 15 date of every month. This family is very well known to me. Till date, they are my patients and I'm, I am so good in touch with them. So, I can tell you that the child has no more problem now, especially with this PUO. At that time, they went to three pediatricians. Nothing happened. They underwent almost 2 lakhs rupees of investigations and treatment. Nothing happened. And eventually, that was the diagnosis, what these pediatricians have given. That is PUO, pyrexia of unknown origin. And as a result, there was no solution in spite of giving all, all, all the kind of treatment. Now, please remember here, what is the date of the consultation was 10th of July. So, 11 to 15th. 11 to 15 was a day of her real acute episodes. I'm seeing the next new consultation on 10th. So probably in 24 hours, the child will end up into her acute zone, the acute fever. So since right now, the case was having no symptoms of that fever. So I had little opportunity to go deeper into this case. And what I did is that I took little bit of her constitutional symptoms because in acute, usually it is not allowed. During the acute consultation, it is not allowed, but I was able to see the child, fortunately, a day earlier to her episode. What I was able to see, these are not that very specific, but that these help me. That is white discoloration, what you call pale spot, B12 deficiency or whatever, constipation, hard stool, used to be a stubborn child, you used to have temper tantrums. She likes to travel. She's a traveling lover in a way. All these were her 
the normal and common, I would say, individual symptoms. Nothing to do with fever. She loves water. She knows everything. She she wants to know everything. She knows she is very careful child. Even though she is of four and four and a half years, things where she has kept, she will go and she will pick it by herself. So that is very very high IQ child. You can say curious. All these things were you know. In a way, it was more or less a common individual information. What I was able to see, other than fever, she cannot tolerate her hunger. Thirst very much, constipated, banana desire, ice cream desire, milk, hot patient, perspiration during sleep, talking during sleep, teeth grinding during sleep. All these symptoms. What I was getting was more or less of an individual category, and these were the situation. Now these are the, this is my repertorial totality which I had taken, and this is the situation what I was at that very moment. Can I have a feedback from the crowd? What medicine can be given to this child if you have understood my perspective? Any, any any thoughts from the people will be very happy to receive feedback from the people because here the 11 to 15 phosphorus very very good in this phase the patient used to be getting sick from 11 to 15 i was very clear that from tomorrow onwards five days i'm going to have a difficult time somewhere i was clear that right now if i'm in a pre prodrome or you can say pre acute zone not you can say prodrome but pre-acute zone, sulfur, Dr. Mamda says, syndrome, Dr. Nirav Nugadi says, Ra Rajesh Bhai says, that Dr. There are four remedies, doctor, now. Phosphorus, natribute, syndrome. And sulfur. Sulfur, very good. Frankly speaking, I had no remedy in my head. The only thing what I did somewhere, it is my, how I practice uh, in the, my homeopathic hospital where I, it make a lot of indoors also, is that I put all the classification, I mean the, the disease of the patient into Hediman classification of the disease. From Hediman classification of the disease, usually your aphorisms get open. So this case, if you see, from 11 to 15, the patient was having acute problem regularly. Before 11 and after 15, Patient used to be normal. So this is a case of intermittent disease. That is 231 to 244 to be precise. So where I'm going right now is 231 to 244 because it's a case of intermittent disease. Because between the two periods, patient is absolutely normal. Correct? So that was the first point. I got a clue somewhere. Now into this intermittent disease, the patient was having fever. So somewhere I'm going into intermittent fever. Intermittent disease are, uh, you can say convulsions, allergies, menstrual disturbances, or very bad menstrual disturbances. All these things can be going can be considered as a intermittent disease where a patient is seemingly normal between the two episodes, but the problem is there, even migraine, right? So here I'm from intermittent disease. I was going towards intermittent fever. So what I did is I actually, since I've read Organon, I would say more than 700 times in my life, I can finish Organon in a day. So this is how my hobby is all, all the way through. What I did is that I immediately recollected aphorism number 242. 242 says that we have now to do with a soaring intermittent fever only and this will be generally be subdued by a minute and rarely repeated dose of sulfur or hypersulfur in high potency. Now this is not from me, this is from anybody. Now the child has undergone all the investigation, nothing has found, nothing abnormal has been found. So we can say it is a case of soaring intermittent disease. Sora was there. So this to me became a clear case of soaring intermittent fever. This was my case. As I said, all the case you, if, if I take 20 cases in a day or if I take one case in a day, I put that patient disease into Hediman classification disease 
unconditionally. You can say dosrojiga classified disease to herbivore classified classification of disease. So this was a case of suric intermittent fever, according to me. Clear? Now you see the trick. I went back again to repatriation. The remedy which was coming was on the top. So I don't know about what remedy because here it was not clear what remedy it could have been. Should I should I go to uh, acute of the previous month? What the description of the patient had? She has high grade fever. She has this. She has that. But if there is no present state of symptom. So you you are not allowed to prescribe. Probably it was melanoma. But I was not allowed to prescribe. Right here, the patient was not normal. He was going towards that. She was going through that problem. So the remedy, what turned out to be repertory was doing was it was sulfur. But my confidence became double or triple simply because I read this. I remembered, I would say, not read. I have read so many times, but I remembered that Hennepin is telling that sodic intermittent fever, either sulfur or hypersulfur. So the patient was, repertory was showing sulfur. Fortunately or unfortunately, Organon was supporting my point of view. And fortunately or unfortunately, I was not clear about the remedy. The remedy could have been, any any remedy could have come from a remedy. If meat, syndrome, meat, phosphorus, meat, natrobure, meat, any damn thing. From A to Z, probably in absence of clear, cut, acute. You just, you can't imagine acute. So what, ha what happened is that I gave a remedy that is Sulfur, 200. Same potency to begin with. I was ready, out 11 to 15, I was ready. That, and we have a facility also, that if a patient is coming here, we can make indoor also. What happened is that I, I gave sulfur 200 one dose, and next day, I was ready for an acute. What happened is that there was <clears throat> practically entire five days, the fever was of a very low grade. So that means what Hedimer is, you know, organon, access to assured success. This is an example. Five days have gone, but fever was comparatively low grade. Patient was better. He was, the child was under my observation. I used to meet the child regularly. My doctors were focusing on that child. But eventually, the child did not develop. Remedy acted as the child did not develop fever which he used to develop. And that is where, somewhere, I really feel the remedy has worked. So sulfur, according to Organon, was the key. Now, since, since the problem was almost 50%, or I would say even less than that, now it is the time to give placebo. So placebo, 16th, okay. 21st of July, one week, again placebo. She has started developing cough, maybe a detox possible. Nothing to worry, good sign. 29th of July, no complaint, no, everything was settled. You can say elimination, wait and watch, right? 6th of August, no cough, now I, I was going in a danger zone. Again, 11 to 15. 11th August, or a day of nightmare for me homeopathically. And you see the feedback, no fever. My God, no major complaint. Treatment placebo. So now, fortunately, the 11th day was a break. The 11 to 15, we were able to make a break, right? Now, 19th, entire week has gone, right? The real tough part, the real tough part of that patient, no fever. The case was solved. What happened? Placebo. I, I wanted to observe the same child again next month. Placebo, placebo. Now, again, 19, 19 September, probably the phase should have been really terrible. No few. So the case was almost cured with sulfur 200, one dose. And that is what magic of working is all about. And now, as there was no fever to since the start of the medication, it is a clear sign that the medicine has acted and it has almost cleared the problem. Now the child has been advised to get to, to be under observation for two months. October, sorry, November, nothing. No fever, no fever. The child is advised to leave the treatment as he has been declared cured 
from pirates of unknown origin. He is, he is advised to consult the same pediatrician who diagnosed her. Now, the same pediatrician is telling that the child is being cured. This is how homeopathy is hope for hopeless and help for helpless. Many times, a remedy is in front of you, but you need a logic behind. That is instrument of precision, organ or logic behind why, why you should select this medicine. In this case, it was very, this, this entire case resonates with the topic of this webinar. The mistake what I had to make purposefully, somewhere I know I'm going, I'm going wrong, but there was no other way that the remedy should not be given at the increasing phase of the fever. But my luck or my bad luck, I met the patient on 10th of the month. 11th was the day of her fever. So I had to give the medicine on 10th with the hope that it will help and it eventually helped. Otherwise, it would have increased the ascending phase of the intermittent fever very badly. Fortunately, what Herriman tells something very clear that modern medicine diagnosed the, that they makes a disease diagnosis, homeopathy makes remedy diagnosis. Symptoms are the outward reflection of internal derangement. Look at the internal derangement through outward reflection, you will be able to treat both of them with one prescription. In a way, with this single line of the organ on 242 aphorism eventually i was able to make a complete cure and this is how i always believe why i i say myself as a proud child of samuel Herriman is because of all this information Herriman has written i would say hardly 139 to 140 pages if you see paragraph 1 to paragraph 294 but every sentence every word even the space given between the two words has a lot of meaning more you read, more you will be inspired. More you read, more you fall in love with. And I am having an affair with Organon. I get so much encouragement reading Organon, which I don't get, unfortunately, with repertory or material. You can consider it is abnormal. Well, it, I, 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 I can be an abnormal individual in that case. Friends, can I have your feedback quickly? Are you, are you able to follow me? Should we go to the next case? We'll be very happy to have your feedback so that We'll be very happy to have your feedback and uh, then we'll go to the next case. Dr. Dr. Shushma, are you able to see my screen now? Uh, I'm, I mean, I can see the screen, but you need to share screen the presentation. Okay. Talk. That is yeah. the problem. I don't know what is the problem. Okay. So Dr. Ojaswini is yeah. saying that now she will start reading organ on. She's quite inspired by today's uh, presentation. I, uh, thank you very much. Well, I think uh, this is something I really believe. I mean, and that's what I'm following. I'm, I'm, I'm saying because I'm following and I am I am really uh, amazed at this information written in the organ order. That took 250 years back. What Hedimane has written 250 years back is coming true even today. You know, Hedimane has said about, we have, we have heard about mental diseases, right? We have heard about physical diseases. Anybody said that now the, uh, a time will come on the planet where people will suffer from emotional diseases. And following COVID, people are coming up with emotional diseases. So this is the truth. And I'm, 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 I'm able to see the farsight, farsightedness of anybody. So some books are to be tasted, some books are to be chewed, and some books are to be digested. Organ should be one of the books. You should, you should be you know, going in your blood. For me, without a, without a single case, I don't remember in my entire life where I've not used organ. And that is where what has made me today, right? This is the second case. Unfortunately, this case turned out to be a success, but it turned out to be a disaster on my birthday. My family was very angry on me. My wife had a huge fight with me afterwards because I was not available or even on my own birthday where she had planned a uh, a program, a dinner and a get together with friends uh, on my birthday in the evening. So this was a case of again a high grade fever on 21st September. And I tell you a story behind uh, in a very uh, uh, short, taking a minute that 21st September is a day of my birthday. 21st September 81 is the day of my birthday. You you all know, you must have observed every, every birthday of yours, you get so many wishes. You get wishes from your 
Facebook, you get wishes from your friends, you get wishes from your family on WhatsApp, everywhere, this and that. You can imagine your how your morning could have been, you know, having so many wishes around. And you you want your day to go special. Because I mean, what is your age are the days of your birthday. I'm right now I'm 42. So 42 birthdays I have lived so far, right? So it's one of the most precious days of the entire year in the individual life. My wife has planned a dinner with my friends. There were almost 40 people waiting for me. And uh, we had a huge, we had a very good gathering along with followed up with a movie. My plan, my, my wife has planned everything. I was aware that I'm supposed to go in the night for dinner followed up with a movie with my wonderful friends. Many of them are allopathic doctors. So this case, Turned everything around. All the program happened without me. It resulted with a lot of fights with my wife. And my family was also disturbed because of my absence on my birthday. And they had to take the dinner. They had to go for a movie. You can imagine how the situation would have been. But since we are on a mission to heal the sick, we are not allowed to have our individual priorities rather than having the major priorities look sit, sitting in front of you. And this case, I can tell you, was really a difficult one. One of the same of difficult category, what I showed to you earlier, if this was a male child, came to me on <clears throat> in the morning. You can imagine, 21st September morning. You can imagine how your birthday. As a result, I, I, I can tell you, I hide my birthday from Facebook. Because on that day, I received 500 plus birthday wishes on my message. I exited, I got an exit, I took an exit, I would say, from more than 12 to 12 WhatsApp group, upon which I'm not posting. But people used to get uh, notification on Facebook, they start writing on WhatsApp. As a result, probably this birthday, the last, last month, I had my birthday, 21st of July, uh, sorry, 21st of September last year. Last month, I'm sorry. 21st of September last month was one of my peaceful birthday. Because Facebook friends and all these things, I I I I kept it completely no no Facebook notification as well. Many people don't know that my birthday was last month. But this was the result out of my last year turmoil I had to face on my birthday. As a result, there is no Facebook on my mobile. There is no social media handles on my mobile. I can I am using it on my desktop, but nothing is on my mobile. As a result of this painful experience, what I found out of my birthday. Now this child has in the morning a, a case is coming to me. 103 degree temperature. Let me make the annotation so 103 three, three degree temperature to a child since five days. The fever started suddenly but remained constantly high. You can say it's a kind of a constant fever. Well, it is not touching the baseline. Fever has never gone down up to 19, less than 99%, 99.5 degree Fahrenheit, following his allopathic medicines religiously. Little cough, little throat pain. So there were no characteristic symptoms apart from, you can say, fever. Right? Going a little bit further, this was a new case to me. I don't know about anything to this case. I'm getting a lot of acute consultations. Patients are, we are meeting each other for the first time when a patient has pneumonia. I'm meeting patients for the first time when patient has uh, acute appendicitis. I don't know what they're, how they are, who they are before. We are strangers. So this was a similar kind of a case last year on my birthday. The child, 12-year-old kid, came with a shawl, having a shawl as a covering. So I thought that this patient has fever with chills. So I spoke to her mother, his mother, that is this a child having fever? She said, usually he's a chilly patient. And because of so much of fever, there must be a breakdown of his energy or immunity. That's why he's wearing a shawl. But still, I was clear that this can be a chill. You can take it chill outside and uh, heat inside. He, during the, it was a consultation of 25 minutes because it was a very... Uh, I would say usually the acute consultation does not last, last more than 10 minutes or 15 minutes maximum. But this lasted even more, I would say more than 25 minutes. I saw a child taking, but uh, they, he uh, drink water, he drank water a couple of times. So I was able to see that is the child is a thirst, thirsty or because of heat or of 
water evaporation has made so he is he, he is making him to drink water i was not clear but what i observed as a rule like the aphorism very very said observation and examination i took that as a part of totally also i observed that the child has a, a, a what you call injury and ichthyosis on his arm i'm sorry it's a spelling mistake his arm this should be not not her his arm so <clears throat> i spoke to his mother that is this uh, because of fever because it can be purpur i can be any thing so she said no he he usually gets this kind of ichthyotic spots so it was an important symptom but not to be considered in an acute because it's not a acute information but as this case was having very lack of symptoms very positive of symptoms very less symptoms what i need is that i had to take in absence of no other symptoms right because the patient you can imagine 103 degree temperature a child is sitting in front of you suffering for five days you can't ex I mean, he can't expect or you also can't expect from your side to have a complete consultation of 2 hours not possible so you have to be short you have to be crisp you have to be quick clinical examination was normal respiratory uh, air entry by by literally equal everything was normal cvs nothing have not detected cns nothing have not detected Uh, detected GIT, NAD, everything was practically somewhere. A child was normal. They have already undergone since the patient was under allopathic care for five days. The child has also undergone X-ray because he had some cough symptoms. It was normal. Cough with fever usually goes to pneumonia, bronchitis, but the patient was having no problems. Blood blood profile for fever was also normal. So somewhere I was not. It was a case of absence of good symptoms. You can say very limited symptoms to play with. The child is suffering from five days. At least you expect good picture symptom to go for. But this case was not showing that. Maybe his vital force was like that. So do you will you wait and watch to have more symptoms to come up, or you act? Now, as an acute. you can't wait you have to act whatever symptoms you have you have to act especially if you consider 182 aphorism 183 aphorism 184 also some part here hedibert tells that you go you will have to change the remedy fast but you have to go you can't wait so i decided with my assistant to go for the prescription what we did is that this was the totally whatever symptoms we had this one bar symptom were doubtful but they were symptoms so i have taken it Three mark were clear symptoms, and two mark were the of visible symptoms. Friends, can I have your feedback quickly? What remedy you would have prescribed if you would have been in my situation? Can I have feedback quickly? <clears throat> Arsenic, phosphorus, lycopodium, veratrum, arnica, rustox, china, five higher cyber, spalsitilla. Any ideas from your side? Okay. Seems it is true that the that that the case is not that very clear to prescribe China. Very much possible. It is. It is. I had once upon a time in that case. I had thought about it. Well, the remedy was not that very clear to me also, to be honest. But what I was able to see is that there are three way three three points you need to prescribe a sibilimab according to you: sphere of action, picture of symptom, and totality. Here, ichthyosis, you know, thirst with fever, constant high fever, with respiratory involvement, took me to phosphorus. So the first remedy what I prescribed was phosphorus, and the I had to take the I, I had admitted the child. I took, uh, you know, I told my assistant to take a follow up every hourly. So this was the case. Twelve noon on my birthday. No change, no new symptoms. Twenty first of one one p.m. No change, no symptom. Two p.m. No change, no symptom. Three p.m. No change, no new symptom. Again, three p.m. Same. Four p.m. More or less same. Five p.m. Same. I mean, the case is not getting moved either towards a worsening side with good symptom or towards recovery. वो वहीं पे अटका पड़ा था और वहीं मेरे मुझे वहीं से प्रॉब्लम थी. कि अगर ये केस में अच्छे सिम्टम आते हैं तो वो हमारे लिए अच्छा है टू फाइंड अ राइट मेडिसिन 
बट वो ये केस आगे भी नहीं जा रहा था पीछे भी नहीं आ रहा था तो करे क्या फिर सो अगेन गोइंग बैक टू द ओरिजिनल पिक्चर बिकॉज नो न्यू सिम्टम एज कम सो वॉट वी आर सपोज टू डू इज गोइंग बैक टू द न्यू न्यू प्रिस्क्रिप्शन बिकॉज अकॉर्डिंग टू टू फोर्टी सेवन एफ ऑरिजम मैक्सिमम यू विल बी एबल टू सी द इफेक्ट ऑफ द रेमेडी थ्री अवर्स सिक्स अवर्स और ट्वेल्व अवर्स दैट इज वेरी ट्रू सो आई हेड वेटेड सिक्स अवर्स फ्रॉम मॉर्निंग टिल वॉट वॉज द टाइम द लास्ट टाइम फाइव ओ क्लॉक सो इन द मॉर्निंग टिल फाइव ओ क्लॉक इट वॉज इन ऑफ टाइम टू सी द इफेक्ट ऑफ द प्रिस्क्रिप्शन इट वॉज नॉट गोइंग थ्रू सो वॉट आई डीड इज दैट आई चेंज द प्रिस्क्रिप्शन How phosphorus? Somewhere, I thought that this is again can be a case of arsenic because totally devised. It was very true, very perfect. Somewhere, same same situation. You know, fever, respiratory issues, thirst, all these things. Somewhere, somewhere, I was able to resonate with arsenic. Let me give arsenic. So what I did is that I gave arsenic. What is the time? Oh, I'm supposed to complete. Uh, I I gave arsenic one one hourly. Again, you know, just to think about, you know, it now it now it now it should work, right? What happened? Six p.m. status quo, no change. Seven p.m. status quo, no change. Now, uh, around six six thirty, I was supposed to leave for my gathering at at my uh, friend I mean, at a hotel with a good dinner and a uh, very good time as a family. Eight o'clock, no change, status quo. Unfortunately, nine o'clock. No change status quo. Unfortunately, ten o'clock. No change status quo. No new symptoms also. This is the bad part of it. If we are getting new symptoms, it will give us the guidance to the new medicine because vital force is getting rejuvenated with partial heat also from the medicine you have given, and it will give you a good symptom. But no change. Eleven o'clock in the night. There was no improvement in this case, and I was really into a deep turmoil. What is happening? Because already the case has taken allopathic medicines for five days. No change. Somewhere I'm missing something. Somewhere I'm missing something. That was a very clear point. So repertory, the symptom what I what I used to consider somewhere what I did very clear symptoms I evaluated very clear. So now repertory, as you know, that repertory is not an end. The end is matra medica. What you should do is you should go to matra medica to find. A right medicine probably you are you 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 can get. So what I did remedy turned out to be ferrum force. And with this remedy, reading but remedy for fevers, high fever without characteristic symptom. This was the case to be. Little little cough, little little chia uh, go what you call shawl. So I assume it was still little little symptoms except the high fever. The high fever was so very high and it was constant. It, the patient has cough. Ferrum was uh, has also an effect on respiratory symptom. Ichthyosis was there on the skin of the uh, patient uh, on the arm of that child, male child. Hemorrhagic tendency. The remedy also has hemorrhages. Patient was chilly, as the mother said. If you remember in the earlier part, that he is chilly, but but he is wearing the shawl right now. So ferrum was is also chilly. The patient took multiple times water in front of me. So thirst was also there. Probably. This can be a case of ferrum force, and what I did, I I opened the same thing in repertory. The ferrum force was on the sixty second spot. Practically, it could have been a disaster. I had to go to from first to sixty one, eliminate the remedies. I do not know that was a good remedy, but what I knew was organon. Where Hennepin used to say, pick a PQRS, whatever you find, hit it. So in this case. Intense heat, high grade fever. The fever was continuous, right? But with allopathic medicines, the fever used to come down also, though not normal. But fever was there. Cough. Patient himself has said, "I have cough," and thirst. He himself drank water a couple of times in front of me. Rest. Ichthyosis was not an acute symptom. It was there only. Chill, extra in external chill, internal heat was my interpretation. Sudden manifestation was there. The fever got sort of very high, but now it is stable. If it would have been balanced on a, or if it would be this case would have been in twenty four hours gone to the, to the roof to the sky, so this was probably can be a case of ferrum force. And Matira Medica helped me to prescribe the remedy, and I gave ferrum force two hundred. In the middle of the night, as I didn't have, I I was not having ferrum force one m. 
सो आई हेड ओनली टू हंड्रेड सो आधी रात को दवाई लेने के लिए सो वट आई डीड आई गिव फेर ऑफ वर्स एंड वॉट आई डीड आई गिव फेर ऑफ वर्स टू हंड्रेड पोर्टेंस ही ट्वेल्व ओ क्लॉक इन द मीड नाइट नाउ यू कैन से ट्वेंटी सेकंड माई डे माई बर्थडे इज ऑल्सो पास सो ट्वेंटी ट्वेल्व ओ क्लॉक मीड नाइट आई गिव फेर ऑफ वर्स नो चेंज वन ओ क्लॉक लिटल बेटर लिटल इंक्रीज इन एनर्ज दैट इज टू फिफ्टी टू फिफ्टी वन एफोरिज्म टू फोर्टी नाइन एफोरिज्म लिटल बेटर सो समवेर आई एम एबल टू मेक अ शिफ्ट समवेर आई एम एबल टू मेक अ मूव वन आवर में इतना चेंज हुआ वे टू एम टेम्परेचर इज द सेम बेटर विद इंक्रीज एनर्ज दैट मीन्स रेमिडीज वर्किंग पेशेंट हिमसेल्फ आस फॉर बिल्क देर फॉर गिवन टू ओ क्लॉक इन द नाइट I'm sitting here in my hospital, having all the quarrels and battles in my home to tackle afterwards. But the patient was better. What happened is that, as a result, temperature at three o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in, in the midnight, patient was reduced with with his fever. Four o'clock, temperature was hundred, much better than before. And five o'clock, practically no temperature. So within six hours, the fever got completely from Hundred and three or four to hundred to ninety nine, and that is what the effect of ferrum force. As a result, what was the lesson that ferrum force helped me to solve the case based on Butler Medica using the guidance from Organo. And that is where I conclude my talk with this presentation. And as a result, these two cases give me give me the most unique experience of my homeopathic practice. That is what is prescribing in acute using organon. It's second with use of butter medica, but a rare but a keynote that high grade symptom, high grade fever without good picture symptom. So that's all I would say, friends. I'll be very happy to have your feedback as well as questions, Doctor Shushma. If people want wishes to ask, we will be very happy to answer. Sure, Doctor. Uh, as of now, I can't see any question. Audience, any questions? You can write it in the chat box. Also, we'll be very happy to have feedback from the people. I think, doctor, definitely the feedback is good. Uh, people are, you know, wishing you a belated <laughs> happy birthday. Uh, as of now, doctor uh, Pratik, I would like to thank you. Uh, it was very insightful and very informative, especially the aphorisms. and uh, thank you for highlighting that you know organon is something we should also refer because most of the time you know we end up only with materia medica or repertory i'm sure many of us will go back with that thought uh, the case presentation was extremely exhaustive and highlighted various aspects of you know organon and to the nth audience thank you all for being so attentive i'm certain we will all disperse today more wiser in handling fevers and applying our organon knowledge we can always connect with dr prutik uh, you know for the organon aspect and sir for the clinical aspect thank you uh, see you in the next session until then keep learning subscribe to our nj channel on youtube be active on our telegram channel thank you and good night thank you very much good night thank you thank you dr sushma Thank you, Dr. Krutik. And if there are any questions, we'll connect with you later. Absolutely, absolutely. Please, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.